Hello everyone, welcome to this quick tutorial on how to get up and running with Raylib Go on Windows. Um, I previously have been following the development of Raylib since about 2017 and wanted actually originally to use it to learn uh, more about Golang. But unfortunately, as we'll get into in a little bit, uh, the process was a lot more complicated so I ended up just sticking with C for the meantime. But now, uh, the process has gotten a lot easier and I figured I'd make a tutorial to show you guys how to get set up. Um, so yeah, as I said, Raylib, super great uh, library for getting used to programming uh, video games and having a great time doing it. Um, again, as I said, I really wanted to get used to or learn Golang um, with uh, you know building out some simple games with this. Um, the current bindings from Gen 2 Brain are actually you know super easy to use. It's really great. Um, however, if I scroll down here, you'll see. Uh, the install process is made to be, uh, to be pretty simple. Uh, this is fairly deceptive. Like if I go back to, <laughs> see, even in 2017 it said this. However, um, previously Go uh, did not work well with uh, um, basically relying on a separate uh, uh, C compiler. Um, it came with its own uh, pre-compiled files on release, and this basically meant that you had to use the exact same version of Go that was or sorry, the same version of GCC that was used when uh, uh, your distribution was compiled. So if you're just downloading, you know, the basic install from right here, that would just not work unless you had the exact same version of GCC or whatever compiler they used. Or you can install it yourself from source, which was a mess in its own right. But now, if I go back here, since Go.120, which was released earlier this year, this process is now super easy. Um, I'm actually going to be starting straight from uh, nothing. So if we go here, first thing we're going to want to do to get set up is to download Go. So you can just type Go download. Um, you'll get pulled to this page or the other page, either way. Just click download here uh, and find your install that you're looking for. So I'm going to go with Go. Again, 120 or later, you should be good to go. Um, but I'm just going to go with the current one. Let's go here, Windows, and I'm on an uh, X64 um, machine. 64 machine, so I'm going to download the MSI here and run that. You can just go through the process here. Everything should be good on default. We have no, none of those uh, ads or whatever, or <laughs> you know, bloatware. <laughs> that was also common in installers back in the day. Um, yeah, so that'll be uh, getting up and running. And I guess real quick, a good way to find out if you have Go installed is to just open up a terminal or something. Yeah, your terminal. And you can do Go version and, oh, well, that works too. <laughs> we go version and you won't have the go command there. That's easy way to f figure out if you have it installed already or not. Now I should be good. So if I open up a new terminal again, make it so you guys can see, go version, type to type. And I have go installed, wonderful, super easy. Okay, now from here, um, let's go back to the Gen 2 brain. You see, you need, uh, in order to run the go bindings, or to leverage the Go bindings library, uh, you need to have a uh, C compiler. So what I recommend is MinGW64, which is just like a, again, fork from the old, uh, what's it, MinGW um, project. Um, if you go from here, go to win, or go to downloads, and then here, what I'd recommend is just go to winlibs.com. Um, you can also just type winlibs.com in your browser or whatever. You'll be pulled to this site. Um, this is just, again, this is just the easiest distribution. Um, and a set of process that I found so far. Um, but if you just scroll down here, there's just a few things you need to consider. Um, if you're on uh, Windows 10 or later, you want to download the UCRT runtime version. Um, otherwise, if, again, like if you're still running Windows 7, which I'd be surprised if someone is at this point, um, then you want to download from down here. Um, and if you aren't, if you're not familiar with with uh, what are POSIX threads are, then I would just download those <laughs> and go for it. Again, if 32 or 64, you're good to go. And I guess the last thing, if you have 7-zip, I download the 7-zip archive. It's going to download way faster and extract faster for you. Otherwise, you can just download the zip archive here. Um, but yeah, you should be good to go. I'll save that. And one second left. Look at that. So fast. Internet of today, I guess. Um, and then, to my downloads. All right. Oh man. Okay. Seven zip, and I'm going to extract. 
I'll just extract here, that's fine. And so now this is extracting, it's got a bunch of, again, uh, pre-compiled resources, but um, what we really need from this, again, is GCC. But I'll show you uh, how to get this all set up really easy for you. All right, so here, yeah, okay. So here's the file, uh, the folder that just um, got extracted. It's mintyw64, and it has a bunch of resources here. What we really need, I wonder if I can do GCC. Boom. Well, and that's not what I'm looking for, actually. There we are, gcc.exe. Um, so that's, that is our C compiler. Um, now what we want to do is basically whenever we say, hey, go run this file, and, and in the background, um, Raylib Go will you know, uh, compile it down to C for us. Um, basically, in order to compile it down to C, it needs this C compiler. Now, how do we tell it that uh, to where the C compiler is? Well, that's going to be where we edit our path environment variable. You don't really need to worry about it. What I would do is just move this folder somewhere where you know you can find it. For me, uh, on my s I have C drive underscore dev, and then I have just mingw sitting in there. And then now, what we can do is you just type environment variables, or if you go to system properties, and then advanced, see down here it says environment variables. You want to click that, find path, and then we'll click edit. And then here, we're going to add a new uh, basic location. Again, if you aren't familiar, the path variable is just basically tells your system where to look for things. Such when I type go, you know, it's actually going to look up um, right here. It says user profile go bin. That's how when I open up my terminal and I type, you know, um, go version. That's how it knows what go is, right? Um, go when you're installing go, it's already set up to add that to your path variable, but obviously we just extracted this take file thing, and now we need to set our path variable to include the mingw, uh, basically the folder which which uh, GCC is inside of, we need to um, add that to our path variable. So here, again, for me, it's C underscore dev mingw bin, I, need, I typed it in wrong, so slash bin, click OK, and then click OK, and OK, and now, if I go like this, now I see GCC dash V, and you can see I have a C compiler. If I did that before, let me actually, I mean, <laughs> will you guys trust me <laughs> that if I did that before I added it to my path variable, it would not be there? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say yes, you should. Okay, and now it's just time to set up our Golang project. Um, in order to do this, typically, you know, you'll want to link out to your, uh, like, GitHub repo or whatever your, wherever your code is stored, but in our case, I'm going to just keep this super easy. Um, you'll do go mod init, and then you'll type in so in certain cases, like github.com slash Adam McAdamson or whatever, right? Slash whatever my repo is. But here I'm just going to do uh, ex example uh, slash uh, raylibgo or something. Should be pretty straightforward. Okay, and that'll create a go mod file, which basically just keeps track of all the, uh, the go version and then the modules you have installed and libraries you have installed and stuff like that. So now what we can do is we can go to uh, gen 2 brain and copy the installation code. It's just go git dash v dash u and then the repo itself. And let's paste that in here. And we should be good to go. Uh, it's going to be downloading here. Do, do, do. And voila, now it requires this uh, dependency for us and keep track of it. Now, what we can do is I'm going to just to demonstrate that we've got it all set up and running, I'm going to create a new main.go file, uh, copy the example code they have here. Uh, paste this in and save. Which again, since I'm using, <laughs> let's see here, uh, VS Code, you know, all the code actions for Go are quite slow the first time around, unfortunately. Um, so I'll be back <laughs> when it is ready. <laughs> okay, so now that we've got that saved, now what I can do is type go run main.go. And let's see here, it should start compiling. It's going to be fairly slow the first time, and then every time after that, it will be fairly quick. I'm currently not saying anything on the bottom right, but just give it a sec here, and we'll be good to go. All right, and there we are. It is all ready. So congratulations, you've created your first window. And now I can click exit and run that one more time. You'll see it's much faster now. 
if I make some changes, um, first window again, it will continue to compile faster now. Um, and yeah, now we are all set with Raylib Go. Um, if you want advice real quickly on how to get up and running, <laughs> you see GeForce is detecting it, wonderful. Uh, GeForce now, whatever. Um, basically, whenever I'm programming w uh, using Ray Raylib, uh, all you ever really need is the cheat sheet. Um, I guess, again, if you tie back to Raylib Go here, all you do is import Raylib, it's RL, boom, boom, and then all the functions and data types and stuff like that um, are just out RL dot, you know, aim your poison. Um, again, um, the cheat sheet here is everything. So say I want to know about collision, I just collision, voila, here are my basic uh, shapes collision detection functions. Easy money. So yeah, it'll be RL dot check collisions rex and you're good to go. Uh, I guess another thing too, pay attention to int versus int32, it really doesn't matter, but you'll be uh, you know casting quite a bit if you uh, have your stuff set up improperly, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, so you guys should now all be set up to start programming with Raylib and Go on Windows. Um, hope this is helpful, and uh, maybe I'll see you guys soon. Later.